See if you've learned anything from Peggy this morning. Romans chapter 12, there are 21 verses in it. Now, if I take verses 1 and 2, what is the term I used this morning? How do you spell it? P-E-R-I-C-O-P-E. -E. What? S-C. No. C-O-P-E. Periscope. Periscope. Yeah. P hey, it's perhaps. It's not periscope. What's all? It's P what? P-E-R. P-E-R. C-O-P-E. I'm not going to. P-E-R-I-C-O-P-E. Periscope. Periscope. Yeah. It's not like that. Okay. Yeah, that's what I want. Now, that means, that means what? It means to take away from. It means to, well, but in the context of Scripture, yes. it is ex extracting, extracting. From, extracting from this a, a, a section, a text, and, and th in this case it would be verses 1 and 2. You're just skipping it. What? You're skipping that. Verse. Skipping what? No, I'm not skipping it. Then you can go back to it. I'm taking out. I'm taking out verses one and two for this sermon, our sermons. But I'm going to have to remember that the text is part of the whole. In other words, I cannot extract verses one and two and make it mean something other than in the flow of the text. The text is. 12, 1 through 12, 1 through 21. Verses 1 and 2 is a connection to all 21 verses. So you cannot make verses 1 and 2 mean something that when you come to 3 through 21, <coughs> it makes no sense. In other words, so often what we do is, <coughs> what we do so often is, is that... Uh, we break in, and as a matter of fact, chapter 12, chapter 12 is a part of Romans 1 to 16. Romans is one book. Out of Romans one book, what I've done over the last two or three years is take from that text and I have covered 11 chapters. Those 11 chapters, those 11 chapters tell you what's in those first six. I've done the 11 chapters. Now those 11 chapters have something to do. The first 11 chapters are what? The first, we've talked, the first 11 chapters is doctrine. Mm -hmm. The first 11 chapters of Romans is doctrine. It's telling you what God has done for you. From 12 to 16 is, is duty. Now that you know what God is teaching, this is how you're to live. This is your duty. So, what happens is, people... Preachers will go to Romans 12, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And people are going to say, why? Why should I? And that's the reason most people don't, is because it's taken, it's taken it out without understanding the first 11 chapters. If you know that God has saved you by His grace and He's brought you out of the married clay and set you on a foundation and then someone says, why don't you serve the Lord? And you're going to understand the reason that I am serving the Lord is because what God has done for me as we've learned in the first 11 chapters. So Paul gives 11 chapters explaining to us what God has done for us by the mercies of God. The Romans 12 1 says. Therefore, it gives us a reason why 
we're to give our bodies to Christ is because what we've learned in the first 11 chapters. And so often, we as preachers break in to a text without explaining why we should do it. And Paul has spent 11 chapters telling us what he's going to tell us in chapter 12. This is why you should do this. And if you come through 11 chapters and 200 sermons, and we come to Romans chapter 12, and I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies and live in sacrifice, and say, why should I? Then you've been asleep the first 11 chapters. If by the time we've come through 200 sermons, and you're saying, well, what does Jesus teach about this? Then somehow you've missed the first 11 chapters of Romans. And then he comes back and he says, I urge you, or I plead, or I beseech you. And the phrase, this phrase, reiterates again, who's the gift is from? When we are vacillating and apprehensive, we can be sure it is because our focus is on ourselves, <coughs> and our human resources rather than on the Lord and His available divine resources. And that's probably what y'all had in the first hour. The reason you vacillate and the reason you are apprehensive and the reason you discourage and the reason you have fears is simply because <coughs> you're focusing on yourself. I sent most of that material to Dave Jeremiah. Joshua and Caleb focused on God's ability. But I, but I sent Dave Jeremiah most of that material, so I'm <laughs> reason I'm not worried about you listening to Dave because he, <laughs> you know, he knows that. He, I mean, I, I know him well. Enough. Actually, verse two. Whenever you get there, I'm is what we are doing in the first hour. Okay. The challenge has to do with the believer's body. I'm going to talk about our body, our physical body, when Paul now reveals to the ultimate key to practice of a victorious Christian life. It is of little avail to know, it is of little avail to know so you've learned a new word, right? Another term, what we've done in the first, what we've, what we've done in the first eleven chapters is theology. That is one through eleven is theology, which is the teaching of God. What did God teach? The truth that we learned in chapters six to eight of Romans. If the body if the body <laughs> if the body If the body, you wish like we had a stick, but if the body is not surrendered so that the life of Christ can be expressed in our everyday affairs of life, if our bodies do not is not surrendered to express what we've learned. God does not, and the thing about it is God does not compel us and coerce the believer into presenting his body. Preachers often do. The philosophy is you get saved, join a church, take a class, do something. Stick them right in there. <coughs> get busy. No, it's not how you do it. 
God does not, he, he does not corral you, <laughs> bribe you like a horse and force him to obey. He beseeches him. He urges him. He prays with him. He comes alongside him. There are some people in churches that won't, won't the, he wants, they want the pastor to tell them what to do. I'm the type, kind of pastor that I want you to tell me what you want to do. Like giving permission. Don't tell me. Do it. I am doing it. Okay, so what I'm, so what I'm trying to say is, what I'm just saying is, uh, what I'm saying is, is that that's, that's, that's your, what I'm saying is, uh, I think that somebody says, I will do this. Other people, why Tra Charles has never asked me to do anything. Charles has never asked me to do anything. Well, I probably won't. I'm in this church with you know, but but most of the time, Bill sees what needs to be done before I know it's happening. Wait for me to see what's going on wrong. I'm in trouble. <laughs> so he ha he ha he has to tell me where my Bible is, where my coffee cup is. <laughs> it's an axiom in a Bible study that when you so it says therefore. In verse 12, I beseech you, therefore, it's an axiom. Find out for me, take how many times therefore is therefore, how many is in the New Testament. Okay. We should pause and see what it's there for. In this case, therefore is linked, therefore is therefore is linked is linked to appear. Verses 1, 11 through 12. As a result of verses of chapter 1 through 11, it is linked, it links God's demand for the believer's body with those mercies Paul has been describing in both the doctrinal and dispensational section of this epistle. God has saved us from sin, from its penalty and its power. He has saved us from self in all of its features and all of its forms. He has overruled the destiny of nations. He has triumphed in His grace and a multitude of His mercies. He has, as it were, besieged us with His mercies. 